our TV host, Michelle Malkin, former deputy assistant to the president, Fox News national security strategist, Sebastian Gorka. I want to be very clear, Michelle. I, nobody has a monopoly. There are horrible Republicans out there, horrible people in general. That's not what I'm describing here. I am describing systematically because of politics. The Clintons were protected by the media and they went out and just abused these women again and again and smeared them to death, even up to and including through the election last year. That's right, Sean, and this is not ancient history. You're going to have all of these liberal wheedlers out there asking, oh, why is Sean Hannity and Michelle Malkin and, and Sebastian Gorka talking about Bill Clinton? It's because so much of the mess that we're in now is a result and legacy of the Clinton victim smear machine. These two are the godparents, Hillary and Bill Clinton, the godparents of victim shaming smear tactics. And now we've got this case where you've got all of these liberal media journalists who are tying themselves in yoga knots to try and reconcile their own roles and their own culpability in enabling the Clinton smears against all of his accusers and victims with the left-wing feminist ideology of believing all women. And now what we know, of course, is it's not revelation. It's merely confirmation, Sean, that the idea that we should believe all women has an exception. Really, the rules for Radicals 2017 has always been that you should believe all women except when they are accusing liberal Democratic men and liberal Hollywood weirdos. There's a second corollary to that unwritten rule that is now being exploded and exposed uh, for the farce that it is. And that second corollary is this. Sean and Dr. Gorka, it's this, that all women must be respected, unless, of course, they are female Republicans, conservatives, pro-lifers, stay-at-home moms, and gun owners. I have lived this for the past 25 years in public life, along with all of the women who have been smeared by leftists in the media and in the Democrat Party. We're always treated as less than women, as less than human. And we have, when we have called out the misogyny and the hypocrisy and the double standards of the left, we get attacked even more. The hypocrisy and double standards are thicker than Thanksgiving gravy. All right, Dr. Gorka. Wow, I don't know how I follow that. Um, Michelle's absolutely right, but let me expand the optic here. There's, there's the issue of the absolute double standards on the left. So now, 30 years later, they find morality. Uh, so it's okay if, if Al Franken admits to it, then it just disappears as an issue. You look at Bob Menendez, Senator Menendez. We're not going to cover that story, but we don't have the proof on Judge Moore, and he's the problem. Them. So number one, Sean, it's the unbelievable level of double standards. But the second thing is beyond that, it's what Cheryl Atkinson has written about in her book Smear. It's the persistent smear tactics, just making stuff up because it's politically expedient to your friends. How is it that you have all these individuals who are supposed to be journalists, but they literally manufacture stories out of nothing to attack the president? Sometimes it's trivial. You remember recently the, the, the fish feeding event in Japan, right, where they, they crop out that the president is actually doing exactly what his host did before. Why? Because it's expedient to make the president look bad. Or it gets far more serious. CNN is going to say that James Comey is going to counter everything the president said about the FBI investigating him or not. It goes on and on and on because it's all about politics. It's never about the truth, Sean. It's never just about journalism. All right, uh, Dr. Gorka, we're going to keep Michelle, so I want to give you one more quick question here. What happens? How do you ascertain? Charlie Rose is, is admitting it. Franken, we have the picture. Some cases you have evidence. Clinton's over time were revealed that these things had happened. What do you do when it is he said, she said? How do, how do people ascertain the difference in an environment where allegations are flying? Some people deny them, say it didn't happen.
It's all about two things, the credibility of the source. Is the individual credible and can it be corroborated? The big problem we have today, Sean, is we don't have investigative journalists anymore. The people like Sarah Carter, they, they are so rare today. Uh, they give a 21-year-old kid a computer and access to Google and they call him a journalist. That's how Politico works. That's how HuffPo works. You, you can get to the bottom of this, but you've got to wear out shoe leather. You've got to talk people to talk. You've got to corroborate the stories, and that just All isn't right. done anymore. It's just accusations thrown out there for political damage. Dr. Gorka, thank you for being with us. Michelle Walker. Here to discuss all that, my friend, political commentator and Fox News contributor Monica Crowley. Monica, great to see you. What's your take on what's happened to the working class of America? Well, they've largely been decimated over many decades, Steve. I think you pointed exactly to, to the reasons why and what's happened to the working class in this country. And it obviously has had serious and significant political fallout because the Democratic Party over this period of time has largely become a coastal elite party. The eastern elites and the western elites and the middle of the country has essentially gone Republican because the working folks in those, especially those 10 key swing states that decided last year's election, they felt that they were not being uh, heard by the Democratic Party. And remember, the Democratic Party for a long time had been the party of, of the working people. That is no longer true. What Donald Trump saw was a real opportunity for a significant political realignment in this country. He spoke directly to those people who were not being heard, being flat out ignored by the Democrats and frankly by the Republican establishment as well, spoke directly to them about their economic fears, uncertainties, and needs. And that's where the whole America First platform came about. So when people say, I can't believe Republicans elected Donald Trump, I always say, no, disaffected Democrats in those 10 key swing states elected Donald Trump because he was speaking directly to their economic mm -hmm. needs and laying out an economic pl plan based on pro-growth economic policies that would raise that class back up. I, I so agree with that, that analysis of the politics, and it's interesting, late, later on in the show tonight, we've actually got some Democrats from those states who are working incredibly hard to correct that mistake that you pointed out. They're trying to win back some of those Trump voters. We'll see uh, if their plans add up to anything. But let's just talk now about the, um, the, the Republican side of the equation, um, because I think the other thing that, that, that President Trump did, Donald Trump in the campaign, was point out that it's Republicans who've also let down those uh, working people. And I think that the, the phrase that you've, you know, we've heard for years um, in conservative circles uh, talking about economic growth is that a rising tide lifts all boats. That's one of the things you hear all the time. It feels like that just hasn't been true for, for, the, for the working people of America whose incomes have been flat, as I was pointing out, not just for the last few years, but for the last few decades. And it seemed like Donald Trump was going to be a different kind of Republican, uh, a populist Republican. Where do you see the differences between his kind of agenda and the traditional establishment Republican agenda? Yes, and this is one a very serious break between Donald Trump and the, the traditional Republican Party establishment and the party agenda. Donald Trump ran on this America first economic message, and by that he meant the American worker. What we have seen so far in terms of the most significant break, Steve, I think is on trade. The Republican establishment has long been for free trade. Donald Trump is saying, no, the American worker has really gotten screwed to the wall over many dec decades because both parties have engaged in this free trade uh, policy and approach that has put the United States and the American worker at a severe disadvantage. So the, one of the first things he did when he came into office was to begin the process Process of renegotiating NAFTA. He also withdrew the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership as well as the Paris uh, Climate Agreement in order to protect American jobs and American sovereignty. He also did another important thing, Steve, in authorizing the Keystone and, and Dakota pipelines as well, which will put a lot of people back to work. So you take that element and you couple that with a more traditional conservative approach of pushing on corporate tax relief, regulatory reform. And those pro-growth economic policies that, again, are more traditional, but they're already bearing fruit. In the first six months of Donald Trump's presidency, Steve, he has already created well over one million jobs. 
and in the first six months, you've already seen him roll back, repeal, or or re, uh, redefine 16 regulations for every new one put in place. That goes well beyond a stated goal. And as a result now, Steve, you've had two consecutive quarters of 3% economic growth. Imagine once they get tax reform through, assuming that they do, um, imagine what the, the traditional engine of economic uh, growth in this country will be able to do. So I think that I agree with everything you said. Um, I think the key test, though, and I'd love your, your just quick last reaction on this, is well, once, once, once some of the, particularly the tax reform, if that goes through, as you say, it's a big if, but let's, let's hope that happens. Will that translate into higher incomes for working people? Are we going to kind of finally get that moving in the right direction? Um, what, do you, what do you think about that? I think so, yes, because when you look at the empirical evidence, Steve, every time there has been across the board tax reform, tax cuts, whether it was the Kennedy era, the Reagan era, the George W. Bush era, every time tax reform and serious tax cuts have been put into place, you have had the result of a booming economy, which does, it does lift all boats. And so you, you get more job creation, you get small businesses, people more able to live the American dream. And the wage, wage stagnation that you mentioned before, which has been such a serious problem since the 1970s, that will also improve. Monica, thank you so much for that optimistic take. I hope, I hope um, it's founded on uh, something that's really going to happen because I completely agree with you. Um, you and Steve. hope to see you soon. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Pleasure.